الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم ما بعد حبت في الله as I've had some uh, made some videos for hopefully the general benefit of all of us uh, about the importance of uh, studying Arabic and many times I've said it's very important to study Arabic uh, it's, the logo, it's the language of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi also as you see I have books and the books gives you the opportunity for one you need the Arabic language to get to the books number two the books give you a variety of benefits from the ulama subhanallah me, myself, one as a part of Minhaj, before we get into this beautiful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu I just want to mention, I try to buy all the books that I can find, this is just my experience being in Saudi Arabia and so forth, uh, that explain books that I've studied. So I like to get a variety of works from different ulama of Ahl Sunnah of the same book. For example, any Baluga Maram explanation I can find, I have. You know, anyone that I, I've seen, unless it's something that I don't see much benefit because I have so many other very beneficial uh, works from the ulama. I've got probably at least 10 different explanations of Bulugh Amaram. Arba'in and Nawi, which we're going to mention a quick hadith and we're going to try to be as quick as possible. Many should have had of Arba'in and Nawi. I just bought this one, but this is, this is just to have something of one of the classical scholars. He died uh, 819 Hijri, so about... 600 years ago, okay, and he's a, a Shafi'i scholar, Rahimahumullah Jamir. But I'm gonna, we're gonna read this beautiful hadith, uh, and this is the explanation of Shaykh Abdul Karim uh, Abdul, uh, Abdullah Al Khudayr, one of the uh, major scholars here in Saudi Arabia in uh, Riyadh. He's in the Hayat al Kibar Ulama, he's from the Kibar Ulama here, but you don't hear his name mentioned, unfortunately, in the English circles and other circles that. That often, but he's from the, you know, Saudi Arabia recognizes him as the Kibar Ulama. And when you see his explanation, you'll understand why in his books. Let's read this hadith of the Prophet and try to abstract as quick as we can because there's so much benefit, it, it should be a dars in and of itself. But let's let's get to work. This is the hadith, the ninth hadith in Arba'in and Nawi. And this is very relevant to a lot of the fitna that we see and a lot of the issues we have. On Abi Hurairah, قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول ما نهيتكم عنه فاجتنبوه وما أمرتكم به فأتوا منه ما استطعتم فإنما أهلك فإنما أهلك الذين من قبلكم كثرة مسائلهم واختلافهم على أنبيائهم على أنبيائهم رواه بخاري ومسلم. This is the hadith of Bukhari and Muslim. And the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه. He said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, uh, what I have prohibited you from, avoid it, stay away from it. And what I've commanded you with, then practice it as much as you are able to. For verily what destroyed the people who came before you is kathrat, you know, is, is, is so many questions, excessive questions, and differing with their prophets. This hadith has immense benefits. Let's just talk about a few uh, benefits. When the Shaykh, the Shaykh mentions something very uh, benefit, and we already talked about many times, Al-Amr Yufid Al-Wujub, that whenever there's a command in the Sharia, that it shows that this is an obligation to, to enact that, uh, that command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waqimu Salat, establish the prayer. That means what? Prayer is an obligation. It is wajib. Uh, unless there's dalil in the Sharia from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, or perhaps uh, the Kitab Sunnah to show that that command is no longer an obligation or it's not an obligation, it's an obligation in its origin, but that shows it that maybe it's mustahab, maybe it's not a, a wajib. So, anyway, that is a general basic fiqh, a sula fiqh principle. Likewise, a nahi you feed the tahrim, that whenever there's a prohibition in the Sharia, that shows that that thing is haram, unless there's evidence from the Sharia to show to illustrate otherwise. One of the other akam al khamsa, the other five 
Ahkam al-Khamsa. What are the Ahkam al-Khamsa? What am I talking about? The five, uh, the five rulings regarding uh, fiqh, wajib, meaning that it's an obligation to do it and you're rewarded for doing it. We're not going to go deep into this. We're going to be quick. Mustahab, meaning it's recommended to do. You'll be rewarded for it. And if you leave it, no sin. Uh, then mubah. Mubah means there's no reward. I'm drinking my coffee, as you can see, and I'm kind of pumped up. There's no reward for drinking the coffee. No reward for it. No reward, no sin. Mubah. It's permissible. Permissible for me to use, to use this Apple computer. Mubah. Uh, then we have uh, uh, makru, meaning it's disliked to do it. And then we have haram. Haram, of course, uh, if you do it, you get a sin. If you leave it, you get reward. So that's in general the Ahkam al Khamsa we're talking about. So the Prophet ﷺ said, and here the Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, he mentioned about Nahi and uh, Al Amr. He mentioned the, the prohibition, uh, you know, his prohibition and his command. So this is very much uh, in line with what we're talking about. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ So whatever I've commanded you with, then do as much of it as you can, as much as you can. The Shaykh mentions here, he mentions that a nawahi, or prohibition, طَلَبَ kaf, meaning that uh, a prohibition is to stop something, is a, is a command to stop something. And likewise, the opposite to uh, a command is to do something. And then he said, Bishart al istata'a. So this is very important. The condition for doing, his, uh, for doing the wajib is in accordance with your ability. Meaning, of course, in Allah Ta'ala, we're all in our good health. We can pray our five daily prayers. But we're talking about other commands, and even that is in accordance with your ability. So it shows us the Sharia is, uh, recognizes our condition. You know, it, it's perfect. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It recognizes the condition of the people doing it. Do as much of it as you can. Okay, do as much as you can. And leave off the Muharramat. And likewise, uh, the Shaykh mentions about Taqwa. Because taqwa also relates to that. The Prophet Sallallahu commanded, talking about his commands, which is something we have to do, and he talked about the nahi, as we mentioned, the prohibition. This has to do with taqwa. Because a taqwa, as some of the ulama explain, which tinab al-nawahi, who would talk, wa imtithal al-awamr, which tinabu nawahi. That doing the commands, fulfilling the commands, and leaving off the prohibitions. This is taqwa. May Allah grant us and increase us all in taqwa. Amin ya rabbil alameen. So that means leaving off the ma'asi and the dhunu. Uh, then let's go to the ibara where the Prophet ﷺ said, فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ كَثْرَةُ مَسَائِلِهِمْ وَاخْتِلَافُهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ So what destroyed the people uh, from what destroyed the people before you. It doesn't mean all these are the only things, but these are some of the major things, these are some of the important things that destroyed the people before us, is that they would ask too many questions, and we're going to talk about that really quickly from the Shaykh's uh, uh, perspective, or the, his, his explanation. وَاخْتِلَافِهِمْ فِي الْأَنْبِيَائِهِمْ And differing with their prophets. So we already know we have to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Follow, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And this hadith, and the many ayat, uh, Qur'aniyah, which illustrate for us that we have to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But I want to get to the importance. He said, Emma uh, so he said, this is related to question. He said, wa masail minha ma umira bihi, wa minha ma nuhiya anhu. وَقُولُهُ تَعَالَى فَاسْأَلْ أَهْلِ ذِكْرِي يُدْخُلُ فِيهِ مَسَائِلَ الْمَعْمُورِ بِهَا وَمِنْهَا سُؤَلْ عَنَ الْمَسْأَلَةِ شَرْعِيَةِ 
Malhajati ilaiha. Okay, we're going to try to get away from the Arabic because some people don't want to hear a lot of Arabic, but it helps me keep my tongue fresh. Okay, so he said, from those questions, is the, the type, he's talking about different types of questions. Some of the questions that we ask are things that, about commands, uh, you know, in the Sharia, or things that are prohibited in the Sharia. We need to know this, this knowledge. And especially when we don't have the knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, He says, فَسَلَ أَهْلِي ذِكْرٍ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So depending on your level of knowledge, if you don't know and you can't do some research to get to that knowledge, then ask someone who has more knowledge than you. And specifically, if you have access to the ulama, or at least students of knowledge, or at least an imam that has some knowledge, or whatever the case may be, whoever has more knowledge than you, then you ask them. Ask the people of knowledge, the people of dhikr, if you don't, uh, if you don't know. So you ask when you don't know. Okay, that's permissible. That is a, a command from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that we should do when we don't know. Ask those who know. And those are good, valid questions, asking about that which is prohibited and asking about those things which we're commanded with. And then he said, uh, and, and those Sharia issues, and then he says, Malhajati ilayha. Those Sharia issues which you have a need to know. So that doesn't mean asking a whole bunch of questions in depth about mess, Messiah, you don't need to know. For example, getting really d deep, some of our brothers and sisters get really deep in issues of takfir or tabdir or jaru ta'adil, and they're just beginning, they're just new Muslims. And they're just, you know, they're, they're, they're not ahlin for, to even get in those Messiah, but they're asking deep. What about jaru mufassir? Uh, you made this statement, and, and they're going deep. I'm not talking about, this is, these are valid, important Islamic sciences, for ahl dhikr for those people who have the right, who have that knowledge, who have that background, students of knowledge, even not just all the students of knowledge, as we've mentioned in in our in some of our uh, prior readings of some of the statements of the ulama. Not everybody should be getting involved in those affairs. So ask about those things which you have a haji ilay, those things which you need to know. You need maybe you you have some issues in your salat. Ask about that. You have some issues about tahara. Maybe you you need to know or your zakat. Those things which you have a hajjah for, okay? I think that's clear. And then he says, this is the, what I wanted to, and why I was reading this hadith per, predominantly. He said, Emma su'al, amma lem yaka. And I heard this from my shaykh, Shaykh Ibrahim al and many mashayikh, because these, these are the mashayikh of Ahl sunnah they give you, they're giving you ilm of it. Okay, so he says, and as for those questions, which have not happened, because some people, they ask very strange questions. Well, what if? What if the moon falls on the earth? Do you know how, how are we going to make tawaf around the Kaaba? You know, all kind of really strange questions. Lem yaka, things that have not happened. So these are the questions that are prohibited about. These are the questions which are prohibited. We're asking very in depth questions about issues, perhaps even in Akida, which have no effect on your worship. They have no effect on your ibadah. They're not going to affect your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you need to know a very intricate mas'ala in, uh, in aqidah, something, I'm talking about daqiq masail, and I can't think of anything right offhand, but someone asked recently about some particular issue and related to sifat. I mean, it was just like really in-depth question that it's not going to make any difference in their ibadah or their or in their really their aqidah. It's knowledge they don't need to know. It's like asking when people ask about you know, Ahl Bidah, they ask Kaif, they ask how about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat. If we read the hadith, Yanzalu Rabbana Tabaraka Ta'ala Kulu Thulu Al Akhir, that your Lord descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. Ah, the Sunnah says, Khalas, we believe this. We believe that the that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the last third of the night in a manner that suits His Majesty. We don't ask how, but Ahl Bidah, they ask how. And perhaps someone who's new to Islam, they might ask how, or someone else might ask how, and they, that knowledge is not going to benefit them at all. It doesn't, because Allah didn't tell us the how. So Allah didn't give us that knowledge for one, and then you're asking about something which you have no need. And it's similar to the, to the ather of Imam Malik when he was teaching in the Haram, teaching in the Prophet ﷺ's masjid. And a man said, uh, you know, I, I think he was, 
teaching about Ar-Rahman, ala ars istawa this ayat, maybe make an explanation. So the man came, and I think he's the beginning of the uh, Ahl al-Itizal, uh, because Imam Malik kicked him out of his circle. But I don't recall exactly. But anyhow, he said, Ya Abu Abdullah, Kib Istawa, O father of Abdullah, how does, how does Ar-Rahman uh, ascend above his throne? Imam Malik, you know, from this type of question, that's a question which has no benefit, and as a question which is gharib because the Sahaba and the Tabi'in, which by Tabi'in, they didn't ask these types of questions. These questions were not, this is not considered a legitimate question that you need to know. It doesn't affect your Islam. It doesn't affect how you practice day to day. So he said, he said, he became very uh, upset by this question and began to sweat. And then he said, al kayf Majhul. Asking how is un uh, and the, the, the how is unknown is unknown. Well, is stoa ma'lum and uh, 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 ascending is known. It's known the meaning in the Arabic language, and it's known that a Rahman ascended above his throne because he said it in the Quran. Al kayf majhu wa is stoa ma'lum wa sual anhu bid'a and asking about it is an innovation. So these are the kind of questions we want to avoid. These are the kind of masail and questions we want to avoid, and as usually I'm talking way too much. Well, Allah uh, And this also is very important. So then the Shaykh he said about these questions which we don't which we want to avoid. He said, O oh, Suel or question, which is a reason for causing difficulty upon the Muslims. This is very important. A lot of times we have, and, and I can recall when I was a young uh, youth, and especially coming from Yemen and, and stuff like this, you know, it's almost like you look for uh, things to make it haram. You made it hard on the people because you were in this village in your closed world. You didn't look at the rest of the world and the other status of the Muslims. You thought, you know, there was a kind of, I'd say some of us had a type of arrogance because we thought, you know, you know, we're fresh, we're just youth. Youth and not steeped in knowledge. We're just trying. We're trying our best, but making a lot of mistakes without the hikmah and without the wisdom. So a lot of times you want to make things difficult on the people. Sheikh so and so said you're giving a fatwa from from you know about such and such issue to make it difficult on the people. These are the kind of questions which are impermissible. Calling the sheikh, sheikh, what about the one who does this, which is a widespread practice maybe amongst the people. And I can think of an issue that some people are uncomfortable with, but for example, uh, asking about oral sex. Some of the societies, Allah, that in, in the West especially, and it's spreading around the world in fact, these practices, but people ask in order, they really want to make this haram. Any way they can, they want to make it haram. So they ask, they ask, how many major scholars have been asked about it? And they said, it's not from our culture, it's makru, whatever the case. These issues have been been ironed out, even from, uh, you know, there's uh, Athar, you know, going back from probably after the Salaf. But anyhow, these are age-old questions, but people want to make it uh, haram on the, on the people. Or maybe because they don't want to practice these things, or whatever, they're repulsive, repulsed by these practices, which is no problem. But they want to force that on everybody around them, they want everybody to be like them. This is the problem. You have to be careful of trying, you know, your intention behind your question is also important. Uh, another important thing uh, and uh, that I want to mention, I'm just going to end with this, and, and other types of question is when you're trying to question, you don't really want the answer, but you're making empty hand of the people. For example, what's your position on so-and-so? What's your position? I get this all the time. People want to say, well, what did you say about Tahir? What did you say about this? What did you say? You know, they don't want an answer. They want you to make a mistake. They want to get you into a trap so they can make tabdi of you or they can spread your mistake around the world or whatever the case may be. These are also impermissible questions. These are also what? Impermissible questions. How do we know they're impermissible questions? What did Imam Baba Hari say? What did how many ulama say about empty hand and nas and make of, of, of testing the people? How many of our ulama now are telling us and, 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 and laying that down for us? No, it's not permissible to, uh, to empty hand and nas. This is an, if there's a, a direct hajj, if you're going to take knowledge from somebody, then perhaps you want to know who they studied with. You want to know what their position on certain people. Yeah. Then, because you're going to take knowledge from them, but in general, make an empty hand of the people. These are also uh, often the result of asking questions that have no benefit. 
those are just some of the benefit. We didn't even really get into the hadith, and we didn't get in the Sheikh's explanation. We just took some bits and pieces, and that is sufficient. And may Allah bless us with ilm al-nafiyah, wa rizqin tayyibah, wa amal al-muttaqabbilin. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.